Well, good evening, all. I wrap the in, and here we are with your financial market wrap up. And this wrap up is for the evening of Monday, and this is the 12th of February, 2024, about 6.40 p.m. Central Time. What a Super Bowl game. Can you believe it? I mean, that's about as good a game as you're ever going to see. Uh, new rules, I didn't understand them completely. I'm so glad they explained them as to what happens in overtime. And I was watching one of the uh, 49ers. He said he didn't even, he didn't know there were new rules. I think I'd know if there's new rules if I were a professional football player in a playoff game. I think you have to understand that. So not the smartest thing that he, that man could have said. But it was exciting. Now, let, let me tell you, I, I'm trying to figure out what can be the event that stops the stock market from rallying, rallying, rallying before a correction sets in? Let's talk at first a few things. You have CPI tomorrow, so you get your core, your regular. It's going to be an important set of numbers. That's one of the reasons you're probably seeing some profit taking tonight. But I think I'm on to something when I started thinking, when is NVIDIA going to report earnings? And it's, I think, the 21st or so. I'll, I'll nail that date down. But it's coming. Unless it's a blowout beyond analyst estimates, that could be the event. In other words, yes, it's great, but the market's already discounted a lot of what it's done, and you get the correction. What's the average size from peak to trough in a non-recessionary year, the average correction size that you get? Do you know it? I do. It's about 13%. So we've had this straight up rally. You're in a perfect environment. The, um, the people that are scared that they're gonna miss out on the movements, the FOMO, they're, they're chasing the market. There's option strategies at work in the markets that are pushing them up too. You gotta pay attention, but understand in stock indices, it's about NVIDIA. And it's what it's carrying and is it game getting ahead of itself? I'd be careful. Keep your eye on energy markets, uh, fuel, gasoline. If you looked at it, it's gone up quite a bit. We're gonna be shifting over. In fact, I might do it as early as tomorrow, away from heating oil now and starting to cover gasoline. I think it's time to do that. So in the stock market, for a change, we're starting the week off where we're down a quarter of a percent. Yippee, I O. When you take a look at the chart action, it's been just straight on up. Very difficult if you're not in because you're just buying the rail and you're going, please don't correct on me because when you do, I could get caught the wrong way. Who doesn't feel that on this rally if you weren't in it? Very important. As we take a look at the market up here, if it corrects, getting back to the 49.53 or wherever the 18-day average of closes is could be an objective. I'm not picking a top here. Not willing to do that in any manner. What I am willing to say is you're up at a resistance point at the Bollinger Band. The market probably has limited upside right now in front of, especially in front of tomorrow's CPI report. And then next week, if I'm correct, I think it's next week that we get NVIDIA. And I think all eyes are going to be on NVIDIA. This market has just gotten, I think, excessive. Doesn't mean it can't go higher, but I think it's excessive. And the fear of missing out, that's what FOMO means. Fear of missing out is so immense in this market. People are just buying everything. And they're saying, okay, I'll buy the other tiers. I'll buy everything I can't be left behind. Well, that's after this rally that's been, it, it hasn't stopped since October. And they're buying all the way up here. And I'll let them. Don't get me wrong. As a trend trader, you're going to get caught on your last trades at the top of a market if you're a trend trader, just the way that it works. Uh, could you peel out of trades up here? Of course you can. Smart Money's probably doing that in front of the first event, the CPI tomorrow. Tomorrow's CPI, don't underestimate it. It either says in one way, now the Fed's got it right, we shouldn't do anything, or what if it comes in really weak, then the market's going to suddenly say, you know what the naysayers are going to do. Nobody's pricing in the March cut and they'll go back to it. What nobody's doing, and I want to be the guy that says this first, what nobody's saying is what about a rate hike? What if inflation picked up again and away you went? 
I don't see it right now in the commodity markets. I certainly see that you're pretty excessive in the stock market to the upside and just running with it. And earnings have been phenomenal for most of the companies, not all, for a good amount of the companies. But I can see resistance here. If the red line closes under 79, I will be of the belief that we're ready setting up for the first correction of the year. We haven't had any correction in 2024. I think you'd agree with that. You can define what a correction is. If you call one day break a correction, then I'm wrong. But if you call it 10%, you haven't done anything like that at all. Be careful right here in the NASDAQ, same thing. Uh, you've gotten up to your Bollinger Bands. That's all that I'm looking for in this rally. It is embedded. Do I think the pros will buy a break? Yes, but I think they'll wait and see the CPI number before they do anything tomorrow. I, I think tonight is where people, instead of buying the break, they pull back and they say, I think I want to digest this number before I do anything. The market that went to the upside to try to catch up with the other markets is, of course, the Dow's making its move and the Russell. But you're over the upper Bollinger Band. You're not at all-time highs here. You keep hitting them in the S&P, the Dow. You're doing all that. This is the, what do I say? These are the guys that are always going to say, look at Ira. Boy, are you wrong. Look at how it's moving now. Okay, compared to the other indices, you're right. Look at how it's moving. It ain't. Then we go to the instruments for interest rates. Why go into the market in front of the CPI? If, I, if you were my client, I'm saying, I think cash is your best position. Let's take a fresh look at the market. We get the report, I think 7.30 in the morning. What's wrong with taking a look? Let's digest it a bit, see what the market does. You'll get some head fakes right off of it. Uh, it's either gonna be neutral, bullish, bearish, I don't care. The, the thing that I care about is get it out of the way so I can this, see what it is and I'll make my own decision up. Is it keep the Fed off March or to put the pedal to the metal and maybe the Fed has to do something? I don't know what which way it's going to go there. In the dollar, we suddenly are getting lower highs, lower lows. Now, the market is fighting a battle to stay over the 100-day average, which is normally big resistance to first move. That's a bullish factor, not a bearish one. But if you take a look at the numbers here, you're not embedding, you're overbought. For my money, I could make arguments that if, if you get a report tomorrow that isn't friendly the dollar, you're going back to the 18-day average at 103.50 to regroup. If the dollar takes off, 107 is a very possible number over time. In the euro currency, I was saying last week that I thought we'd get a rally. I was hoping to get it higher than this into the 100-day average in green in the 18. Didn't quite get it. You're very oversold. I know what market's waiting on. It wants to see US CPI. In the pound, we're getting a short covering rally off the 200-day average in the lower Bollinger Band. No trend that I can see to trade off of. You had a higher highs, lower lows. Now you got higher lows, higher highs, but you're staying under the key number, the 18-day average of closes. Very difficult trade. My favorite markets to trade are currencies, and I haven't put out anything on them in a while here, and I can see why. Now, in Bitcoin, as I said, I thought this market was ba basing out here. Here's a new high on the move, finally up to the $50,000 move. And of course, the bulls are out in mass going, folks, you don't understand that we're going to a half a million dollars, blah, blah, blah. I'm watching one bull after the other come out, and they all have different numbers, of course, but they're explaining the beauty of it, why the market is moving. And by the way, I agree with them on one thing. We saw big outflows a week ago not inflows, and this market's moving higher. So somebody wants to own this market. Would I ever tell a trader to buy over a Bollinger Band? The answer is going to be flat no. You only stay over those bands 5% of the time. But being over the band is not a bearish sign. It's a sign of strength. But you generally get a chance, to, if you want to buy, to buy it within the bands. Now, it's time to move to April versus April Brent versus WTI crude, you could see it peaked out in the 540 range, you're pulling down. Be aware, you're going to get the OPEC and the IEA data now. 
And when that data comes out, we'll get the idea of what OPEC thinks demand's going to be and what per, per barrel per day and going forward and so on. Today, they already came out uh, from Saudi Arabia, the, the head of their energy commission, and he said, you know, the reason we're not expanding capacity is we have other things to invest in. We are transitioning away from fossil fuels over time, and we're putting mon our money to work in many other things. Plus, we have a tremendous amount of spare capacity. Everything he just said is not not true. It is absolutely true. So I give him credit. He's telling you the story the way it is and why invest billions upon billions into this when they, it, by not doing so, if there's continued demand, they just reap the reward. They have the excess capacity. They don't have to chase it. The world's trying to get away from it. And if prices go to 100, 110 over time, who gets the reward? They do. When you take a look at where the market's fighting, you have a pattern of lower highs in the Brent, lower and low, but you're over the 18-day average. You're fighting and have been. You got up and over the 100-day average, fell right back under it. You just got back over it. Will it stay over it? Is it going to pull back again? If it can get itself up and over 82.46, it captures, I think, the bears in the market. And you could drive on towards the upper Bollinger Band. Be an interesting uh, move there. Same type of play in WTI. So are these trend trades yet? No. When you have the trend down, the bias up, you're getting a bullish crossover where the 18-day average just crossed over the 200. That's friendly long term. So the support in the market's back down a couple of dollars, uh, but this market's not acting bearish, I can say that. Then we come over to the heating oil, and as I said, I'm going to leave this. I'm going to start getting now ready and moving into the gasoline for you. I think we can say goodbye. We're already at February 12th. I don't see, well, let me state this right. If I lived on the East Coast, the schools are closing. Many parts of the East Coast, Upper East Coast, are going to get a massive snowstorm, cold weather. We don't have that in the Midwest. I mean, we're going to be in the 40s. We have some snow coming, nothing that's going to stay on the ground at all, more rain than snow. But out east, it's a whole different story. And far down south, they're getting some bad weather as well. And they'll have some heating oil demand. But we're going to switch over soon to gasoline demand. So I want to be there for that. And in natural gas, nah. If you're not short already, it's too late to join in. You know, I don't think selling at $1.75 without a hard bounce in the market first makes any sense. So... As I said, I'm going to write a lot of information now about these markets tomorrow. And if you haven't seen my reports and you want to see what we as a firm say, there's one way to do it. Go to our website at irapstein.com, free offers, or move your cursor right up to the top here. That's the way to do it. Sign up and we'll get you all set. I'm Ira. You have yourselves a great evening. I'll catch up with everybody first thing in the morning. Take care.